Um, I'm Heron. I freelance for uh, The Guardian and other places, and I work at um, US Gamer as a guides editor um, under someone who recently revealed that he couldn't fire me, so uh, have that. Um, and my talk is a lot less... Um, a lot less complicated, a lot less good than all of the others, but um, yeah, I write words for a living, but I'll do my best. Um, what, are NPC, what about NPCs make video game worlds feel real? And which is funny because when I wrote it in the guide for Thrin, I made it sound a lot more, a lot more complicated than that, but no, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it here. That's what my talk is about. I'm sorry, it's gonna be boring, but please bear with me. Um, but that's what it essentially boils down to. What about NPCs within video game worlds make them feel real? And I think a biggest part, the biggest part of that, arguably, is... Uh, that's what you're probably thinking right now, just but bear with me, please. Um, that it's conversation, ignore the stock image, but yeah, it's conversation um, between NPCs within worlds. And although that might feel very simple and sound very simple, that's something that I think a lot more people than they would like to admit struggle with on a daily basis. I know I, I know myself, suffering from depression, struggles with it on a daily basis. Um, conversation is, it's we, we take it for granted. It's in like real life, but it's not something we should take for granted within the virtual world. Um, so. Uh, I work nearby uh, the Eurogamer team um, and there are lots of conversations there that I'm not necessarily um, a part of and if I told you half of the conversations over here, Chris Bratt drops out that shoot and kills me, so I'll keep it brief. Um, but that's uh, the basis to my foundation is that we hear a lot of conversations and we see a lot of interactions in everyday life, even with people that we're not so far away from that we're not necessarily involved in, and that's okay. So take, for example, The Witcher 3, which is, like, without a doubt, one of my favorite games of all time. Um, yep, yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> one person gets it. Um, but that game is undoubtedly one of my favorite games of all time. It's a game that made me turn back and read about four or five novels um, in the wake of just trying to simply understand it. Um, it's a game that I've put about 400 to 500 hours into on top of having a full-time job, so you can imagine what my free time is like, um, or lack of it. Um, but the real world in this case is impos impossibly detailed. Um, you kind of look at that background, back, the background right there, and you think, how can this world not feel realistic? Um, it's got all, it's got everything that you could ever, ever want from a real world. It's got the people, it's got the locations. Um, but there are just a couple of things that happen whenever you encounter NPCs and most of them result in that. Um, just killing people. That's what I feel as though most of the interactions with NPCs revolve around um, in The Witcher 3's open world. Um, and that's not something that I necessarily feel brings it to life. I don't feel there is a, as though there are unique um, interactions and encounters with different NPCs scattered around the world. I do feel as though oftentimes it resorts to um, just sheer violence with, within its different NPCs. Um, but that's, so that's one of my favorite games of all time under uh, the guise of this, which I've now completely just demolished. Um, but if you allow me, please transfer to this game. Um, this is Yakuza Zero. Um, who's played Yakuza Zero here? Show of hands. Good, good, good. That doesn't count. You can't just say you're going to. You're going to after the next slide that I show you. Bear that in mind. So, yeah, it is. Believe me. Um, so, uh, train of thought. Yep. Um, Yakuza Zero is a very interesting game. It's possibly on the opposite end of the spectrum to The Witcher 3. Um, the Witcher 3 is impossibly detailed. It's got a production budget, I, the likes of which I can never even imagine. Um, but Yakuza Zero is set in the middle of fuck knows where in Japan. Um, and it contains various antics like this. If you interact with that NPC, you can get that chicken to be your real estate manager. Um, not making it up. So that's one half of the interactions that I feel as though Yakuza Zero has. The other half 
of the interactions go something like this. Now, yeah, yeah, uh, walk, walking erection. Um, they really don't try and sugarcoat it. Um, but that's kind of the other um, half of the interactions with the NPCs that I feel either they're very, they're very, like kind of strange, and they don't really bring much to the game apart from just making you laugh there in that moment. Um, that's these two in any case, but with or they just end up like this, um, where you just use motorbikes and lamp posts and all that to beat people down, and it's you know it's fantastic. It, admittedly, it is a fantastic game, um, but I feel as though a lot of the NPC interactions either do resort in stuff like the walking erection or um, just violence where you're flinging motorcycles everywhere like your King Kong. Um, but then another game came along from a person that I can't believe is the face of a franchise and a multi-million dollar franchise at that, but we'll give it to him. Um, and before this year I'd never even played a Nintendo game in my life. Uh, which is something I'm, yeah, I see a look, disgusted look there. It's, yeah, I'm loath to admit it. Um, but the game that made me stop and think about NPC interactions in particular is a weird one, and it's Splatoon 2. Um, who has played Splatoon 2 recently? Oh, okay, more of you need to play it, but that's a good start. Um, Splatoon 2 is a very interesting game. Um, it's a game not really like anything else, or at least not like anything else that I've played. Um, but, but mainly because of these two, um, Pearl and Marina. They are fantastic. Um, yes, these are two NPCs having an interaction that isn't based around, you know, violence against people. But there's one detail in this um, picture that I've noted, which, you know, up until 30 hours playing through this game, I wouldn't have ever noticed before. Um, and that is the guy just stood there taking a photo. Um, and you might think that that's like nothing. Yeah, yeah those are his idols. He probably wants to you know, get on the TV. You probably think it's just a split second in like that cutscene. But you know, there he is. He's just like, he's just stood taking a, taking a photo. I, I don't know how many minutes he stands there for or how many hours he stands there for even. Could be a bit of a creep. But um, no. The main kind of thing that I took away from that small interaction is that um, these, MP the, these NPCs mean something to that NPC. That NPC idolizes these NPCs. Um, and obviously, if he's trying to get a photo of himself on the screen, I think that means there must be like some weird kind of Splatoon TV in the world of Splatoon, which I hadn't really thought about before. And if he's trying to get a photo there, it probably means there's some weird kind of Splatoon to social media as well within that world that I hadn't really thought about either. Um, so just that one tiny interaction that I could never have noticed playing through 30 hours of Splatoon 2 just pops up there all of a sudden. Um, and it, it's just got me thinking that's a really nice, unique way to have NPCs react to one another to make the world feel, to make them, those two mean something. I don't know anything about Eric, but I know that he, I know that he idolizes them. And I mean, I don't know what he does when he goes, when, like when he goes home or what he does after hours, but that's not really like my concern. He has an interaction with them that's special and unique to him. And I think that's kind of a nice, tiny, tiny, minuscule little detail that brings Splatoon 2 to life somewhat, arguably more so than The Witcher 3, which is crazy saying that out loud, that a game like The Witcher 3, which spans like miles upon miles, has a production budget of like 90 million US dollars, that that tiny interaction could mean more to me um, than anything in that world, but it's kind of true to me. Um, and yeah, so that's my talk. That's why I really like Splatoon 2, in a nutshell, because NPCs can have interactions with each other that aren't like predicated around violence or anything like that. So, thank you. <laughs>